Hello, my name is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room, show number 235, I think. Got it kind of mixed up in the numbering system there a couple of shows ago. I think I got that straightened out. Anyway, uh, this morning I was kind of perusing the internet, trying to look for information uh, that might be of some interest to my viewers, and I ran across this webpage here called Off Grid Survival, all one word, dot com. And what they had there that caught my eye is this cheat sheet for or related to um, emergency communications. And specifically what it is is a cheat sheet related to ham radio or amateur radio. And it's not only applicable to those of you that are, that are getting into ham radio, but it's also applicable to those interested and our listeners of ham radio transmissions, communications, whatever. But it's a neat little cheat sheet. And we'll go down here. And first it gives you a listing, or not a listing, a graphical view of the ham bands. So when I'm talking, you know, about 80 meters, this is the band I'm talking about. It also shows you if you're a ham operator and have a license, there's various grades of the license which give you various privileges. Uh, for instance, uh, if you have the uh, lowest uh, license, which is a technician's license, uh, you mainly can operate uh, in the VHF and UHF bands. And this little designator here, E-A-G-N-T, designates who can operate in that particular band. So even up in uh, 40 meters, a uh, technician license can operate in this band up here, but only in, I believe, CW mode. So that's the first thing this thing gives you. Oh, and here, yeah, here is the... Uh, the, um, whatever you call it, I forgot what you call it, where what the icons mean, basically. Gee whiz, oh gosh, oh man. So anyway, uh, this little squiggly line thing means you can only operate in CW mode. So, for instance, going back to the 40 meter band, uh, extra class license can operate uh, a full band and it can operate in RTTY in the data bands and uh, phone and pictures in the upper part of the band. And this also gives you some idea where people are and what they're doing. So if you're interested, if you're not a ham, for instance, and you're interested in uh, some of the digital data like uh, decoding CW, decoding um, another method, which is PSK, PSK31, which I've shown you in one of my videos, how you can do that using some software. This tells you in each band where to look for that kind of communications. So that's the first. Thing. The next thing is what's called Q codes, which are abbreviations that hams use, especially when they're doing CW, so they don't have to type out a long statement. They can just a Q code, use a Q code. For instance, I have used um, the Q code QSO, which means abbreviation for a contact. And I use it as a QSO for some of my videos that are just short communications. So that gives you the Q codes. You can see um, another one that you hear. See if I can find it. Yeah, QRM is the abbreviation for interference from other signals. So sometimes you'll hear a ham say, I'm getting a lot of QRM, means he's getting a lot of interference on the signal he's trying to receive. And then down at the bottom here, oh good. That weather is brought to you from Clearwater, Florida. It's my automatic weather station. It is hot. Well, not hot, but it's hot compared to what it should be this time of year. It's in the 80s already this morning. Okay, and the next uh, little cheat sheet they give you is a phenolic outfit and Morse code. So if you hear people, you know, call out their call sign, um, they'll do it alf alf 
phonetically. I'm going to get it right here. Phonetically, so that people can understand. So they could, might say, you know, Hotel Charlie Four Echo uh, Oscar, you know, something like that. So that this is the codes for that. What each word means a letter. And then, of course, here's the Morse code. So I just thought I'd show you this. And down here, you can click down here and get a printable version that you can actually print out, put someplace with when you're listening to the hand bands. Uh, it makes a useful reference. So anyway, that's one page I wanted to show you. The next page is I want to tell you a little bit about upcoming shows. This is my Amazon store. And I really appreciate everybody's been using my store. I've, I've gotten um, pretty good commission coming up this month. Pretty good at and maybe $20. Um, and, of course, like I said before, I use that commission. It's actually a credit on Amazon I get. I use that to buy things to review on my show. And then I try to give them away. So one of the things that's upcoming is this uh, scanner antenna. I purchased that. Actually, I purchased that through a credit that I got from one of my subscribers on Amazon. And uh, so I've got that. I showed you a quick video of it. And uh, as soon as I can get a uh, neighbor to trim some trees back for me, I'm going to put that up and do some testing. So that's one thing, one show that's coming up. The next uh, thing I want to show you is here's, here's something else I bought. This is one of those things that you know, I kind of looked at, I looked at for, I've been looking at this particular antenna that these guys, this guy sells on eBay for about six months. And I'm like, you know, is this really uh, of any value? And he's gotten good reviews on it. So I thought, what the heck, you know, I'll go ahead and buy one and try it out. And this is a HF antenna. It's a homemade deal. He, uh, he's been doing this for quite a while. So he's kind of I'm assuming he's got it, got it down to an art. And um, so I got one. It came in the mail uh, the other day. And uh, I'm going to unbox that, string it up in, uh, in a tree someplace, hang it from a tree, and see how it does. And again, this is for the HF bands. And so I'll be telling you about that in future shows. And the last thing that I got in uh, recently that I want to do a show on is another under $15 shortwave radio. And this is uh, this is from Amazon. I haven't put it on my in my Amazon store yet. I need to do that. Uh, I, well, I'll do that after I've done the review. Because I try to only put things in my store that I myself would buy, in this case, more than once. Because right now I'm just buying it to investigate it. I like, I like in trying out these inexpensive radios because to me they I'm looking for one that you know I could just kind of throw in the truck and and have it available whenever I need it and not worry about dropping it or getting getting stole or anything so this is another one this one is unusual in that it's big it, it's compared to the little ones I've been getting this one's pretty big and it runs on D cell batteries which means it should run for a long time on a set of batteries so we're going to view that, review that uh, in an upcoming show and see how it does. So anyway, that's kind of a, an insight to what I found on the Internet, what I'm planning on reviewing in the future shows. And um, if you have any suggestions of things you want me to review, please leave me a comment or send me an email at trrs73 at gmail.com. And I'll see if I can uh, put it on my list of things to do and have a review. If there's, if there's a subject related to uh, shortwave listening, scanner listening, scanner radios, ham radios that you want me to talk about or investigate, please let me know. I'm open to suggestions. And there's a lot of things that out there that we can discuss. So that's the show for today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this show, please give me a thumbs up. That gives me an indication that you enjoyed the show of this type, and I will do more in, like this in the future. Bye-bye.